Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today in what is an emergency video as this topic of conversation has been percolating around the XRP army today with a massive tweet from David Schwartz. But first, let's review the crypto market for just a second. Bitcoin had hit 52k and it's currently trading at 51400. This is incredibly special as I personally didn't even expect Bitcoin to hit these high levels. And the more we continue to teeter at these levels, the more bullish I get for the totality of the crypto market. However, a lot of people have been typing in the comment sections bull. What happened? to that prediction by Waters of a pullback in February. Guys, that is also still on the table. What all of you need to realize and understand is anything can happen in crypto within just a couple days. We could pull back by 20% tomorrow and it would be absolutely normal. But at the same time, I remember mentioning just a couple weeks ago, I had no idea what the exact short term was going to look like. Because overall, the crypto market is bullish in the midterm and the long term. However, the short term is always up in the air. The longer you extend your time horizons, the more accurate your analysis will be. I've never pretended to be a short term price analyst to every single one of you because I'm not. I cannot predict the short term and I refuse to. However, I'll bring on chart analysts that are much smarter than me at pinpointing these price targets. And I just have to tell all of you, while well, I'm bullish for the next few months and all throughout 2024. That February pullback is still on the table and all I'm doing is telling you. Putting that in front of your eyes to see and your ears to hear so you're prepared regardless of what happens. There are people out there that'll be like, hey bull, look at you covering your ass. <laughs> Saying yes, it could go up, it could go down. Guys, I'm not here to try and predict short term price targets. I'm here to tell you that in the midterm and the long term we are guaranteed to see better values and better bull market cycles. We are here for positive price action and to see our investment do the things we expect it to do. And whether it goes up by 10 cents or down by 5 cents, by tomorrow is so irrelevant I don't give a solitary fuck. That is how you should be thinking about this as well. But in the next few months, and throughout 2024, you need to remember that we are perma bullish. Hold strong, my friends. We will persevere. Now here, from Good Morning Crypto, he asked the question, is Ripple stifling XRP's price potential? Accusations of Ripple dumping XRP sparked a fiery response from David Schwartz who unveiled their quarter 4 2023 markets report. He stated Ripple has continued to sell XRP only in connection with on-demand liquidity. But they did stop programmatic sales to exchanges of XRP. And this is hyper important. There is this belief that Ripple is just dumping XRP needlessly and to make money on the XRP community. And let me tell you something right now, my friends. There's too much self-righteousness amongst communities in crypto. I'm going to tell you the absolute truth. Everything in crypto is a Ponzi. And everything in the world is a Ponzi. That is reality. Your retirement accounts are a Ponzi scheme. Your 401ks are a Ponzi scheme. The stock market is a Ponzi scheme. Cryptos, even the legitimate ones, trade like Ponzi's. Someone always gets wrecked and there are always early winners that are dumping on the new retail investors. Real estate is a Ponzi scheme. At certain times, gold is a Ponzi, even though it does retain intrinsic value. 
the things that distinguish actual Ponzi schemes from legitimate investments is the people building the technology serving a purpose and whether or not you believe the future value will be there. But at the end of the day, every single project in crypto sells on retail, all of them, every single one to develop the ecosystem. When you look at the HBAR Foundation, they sell their HBAR in droves. They've inflated the supply of HBAR tokens. But it's because they're spending money on developing use cases and utility for the ecosystem. That is the difference between a Ponzi and a legitimate project. A Ponzi scheme will just take the money and run. HBAR is building... I know a lot of people feel some type of way about Ethereum and the XRP space. And there are reasons to. Ethereum has sold the absolute peaks. The Ethereum Foundation, time and time again, as quoted by Vitalik, has sold the absolute peaks. And then, retail investors are bag holding. But what ends up happening is, they'll go through the bear market continue to build, and then rise out of the suppressed price. The only reason this hasn't happened as aggressively with XRP is because of the SEC lawsuit, but I believe more of what has to do with that is the fact that it got delisted from every single U.S. exchange on the planet. That was the main problem. There was no on and off ramps for Americans. There was not enough liquidity for XRP. But this time around, that does not exist. And we have a lot of pent up demand in the background that I believe will drive the XRP price forward. All the building, all the new tech, AMMs, passive income is coming. And I believe new partnerships are on the way. I think 2024 is the year where we see the mainstream initial adoption of a lot of the things XRP is looking to do. Cross-border payments, CBDC interoperability, stable coins, NFTs, AMMs, smart contract capabilities coming soon. Maybe even incentives for validators. Who knows? But what I'm trying to stress is, Ripple is not your enemy in regards to XRP. They're the fucking reason you all hold it. Stop it with the self-righteous bullshit. And continue to hold strong. Now guys, I'll give you a quick clip from Zach Rector in the XRP space. Stating XRP is breathing now as they've allowed it to breathe. And that breath of fresh air XRP is going to give us in this 2024 bull run cycle is going to drastically improve our lives. They let XRP breathe. That is the title of the video that I am uploading to YouTube right now. And you guys aren't going to want to miss this one. What we uncovered was an email exchange where Ripple, working with the market maker called GSR, sent them a request to let XRP breathe and to basically shut down the bots that they were using to do programmatic sales to exchanges. This email went out on December 18th, 2017, after XRP had gone from about 20 cents all the way up to 80 and then cooled back off to about 67 cents. Now on December 18th, this email goes out and over the course of the next two weeks, this is when XRP absolutely melted faces going all the way up to over $3.30 to that all time high. Now. You guys can see in this video for yourself what I'm talking about. And the question that I'm asking right now is what happens this time around when it's time to let XRP breathe? The space is much bigger. I think the XRP is going to go much further. You guys let me know. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a great account from Sean McBride, the ex Ripple employee who predicted there will be breaking news. And then like clockwork, it happened. States, my wife and I were discussing XRP and the potential reasons why it hasn't exploded like it should. I used the analogy of having a Lamborghini and XRP but only being able to drive it on a road filled with potholes, like the current payments infrastructure. 
rebuilding an archaic global payments financial infrastructure doesn't happen overnight. But when it happens, expect the Lamborghini to have a nice, fresh, smooth surface to burn rubber all over Gary Gensler's face. This is a very important point. And remember, we are still in a nascent speculative market. Most of what's happening in terms of price action in crypto is nascent speculative uptrends. But it's going to be the ones with the superpower partnerships that are going to win. And you all have to remember that Ripple is a gold sponsor at the Digital Euro Conference in Frankfurt on February 29th. Ripple is also part of the panel, titled When the Rubber Meets the Road. <laughs> oh, isn't that so ironic? I didn't even realize that that analogy he mentioned was going to go perfectly with this post. The universe is so good. The real-world impact of CBDCs will be the panel discussion Ripple's on. And I think 2024 is the year where we'll see internationally a lot more CBDCs coming online. And those are some of the initial steps that I think we need to see before full-blown XRP utility and adoption. But one of the other steps that we need to see before XRP full-blown adoption is more blows dealt to Elizabeth Warren's anti-crypto army. Eleanor Tourette posted that the Treasury has dealt a massive blow against Elizabeth Warren as a top official at the Treasury's Department of Terrorism and Financial Intelligence debunked Elizabeth Warren's claims that crypto was used in Middle Eastern threats. This off the heels of Elizabeth Warren signing a certificate to honor Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto. This is absolutely absurd. How does Elizabeth Warren go and in one hand say everything about crypto is a scam and terrorism and in the other sign some bullshit like this? I don't even know what's going on anymore. But the fact of the matter is that nothing can stop this from coming. The digitalization of the financial system is here. And the crypto bull run of 2024 will go down in history as the XRP army's apology to itself. All the gains we missed out on in 2021 and 2022 we will make up for tenfold. And let's see what the future holds. Now guys, to cap off this video for today, we have Brad Garlinghouse at Davos with a message to the world. The theme of rebuilding trust is paramount in 2024. And Brad Garlinghouse and Ripple have a compliance first mentality. Regulation and regulatory compliance will be a key theme in 2024 to bring back trust after FTX and after Terra Luna collapsed. And I think Ripple's going to be a spearhead, especially after defeating the SEC in its totality, for what it means to be compliant and to have regulatory clarity. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, XRP is the only fully compliant crypto that has full-blown clarity in the United States. And I can't stress that enough. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable bull here. Thanks for tuning in. I've been promising an aggressively average podcast episode that I've been working on in the background. An El Toro Loco special, if you will. And it's going to be one of those that reminds every single one of us that we will become multimillionaires with this asset. And I'm going to give you all the reasons why I believe in an hour-long special XRP will absolutely bring new all-time highs in 2024. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow. 
with another video. The theme of rebuilding trust is paramount, and I think that applies to crypto as well. Last year's a year with a lot of headwinds, some self-inflicted wounds, but I think as we rebuild trust with the ecosystem, with the major players, I think uh, the future is extremely bright. 2024 is going to be marked with uh, the, the reversion to kind of core first principles, recognizing that compliance in crypto and all financial services is very important. And I think to build that trust and to really scale into the opportunity that crypto represents, we have to have that compliance first mentality. The primary thing I'm looking forward to in Davos is staying warm. Uh, it's, it's definitely a cold year, a little more snow than previous years. Now, Davos always, I think, uh, stimulates ideas. I'm mostly thinking about the crypto industry and Ripple specifically, but certainly what's going on on a geopolitical basis and with climate are front and center here in Davos, which is obviously very important. Hot tips will ruin you. If you want to be a successful investor, be boring. Please get some experience and please focus on what you already know. Don't listen to hot tips. We're all going to be down at the bar on Saturday. And I promise you, at least 10 people are going to come over and say, you know, let me tell you about this company. Let me tell you about this stock. It is going to go through the roof. It is the best thing since sliced bread. You should buy this stock. And if you don't listen to him, don't worry. Someone else will come over and give you a hot tip. Please ignore them. It is not a good sign when you go to the dentist and the receptionist talks, he wants to talk to you about stocks. Don't get excited when everybody's excited. And please, if everybody's depressed, you should get excited. Emotions do usually do not help when you're trying to make investment decisions. We're all human beings and we all have emotions, which can be a negative. Being cold-blooded and heartless can be useful if you are going to be a successful investor. Everybody should learn to only invest in what you yourself know a lot about. Don't listen to other people. Don't listen to hot chips. I mean, everybody watching this knows a lot about something. Fashion, sports, cars, something. And that's where you should focus. If I told you you only had 25 investments in your lifetime, you would be careful. You wouldn't jump in and out. Every time you heard a hot story, you wouldn't invest would be very careful and you would be successful. I know everybody thinks this is easy. It's never been easy for me. So please focus, concentrate, be disciplined and wait until you find a good opportunity yourself. People will say, oh, that's boring. Be boring. If you want to be a successful investor, be boring. Diversification is not going to make you rich. Diversification is something that brokers came up with to protect themselves. <laughs> so you, they won't sue you. And if they sue you, they won't win because you're diversified. If you want to get rich, you focus. You put all of your eggs in one basket. You better be sure it's the right basket. And you better watch that basket very, very closely. But that's how you get rich. Henry Ford didn't diversify. Thomas Watson didn't diversify. These guys put all their eggs in the right basket and got very rich. There's the problem with success is you think you know what you're doing. You think you're smart. You get cocky. You get arrogant. I learn more from my mistakes than I do from my successes.